Dr. Ray, let me start with you if I could. I think the last time that I got to visit with you was back in August, August 4th of this year. You were at the Senate Judiciary Committee. You remember that, I assume. We had to cut that hearing short. We were supposed to do two rounds of questions. You said you had to be somewhere, so we cut it short. Republicans were not able to ask a second round as we had been informed we would. The press reported shortly thereafter that the reason that the hearing had to be cut short is because you were flying on a Gulfstream jet for a personal vacation in the Adirondacks. Please tell me that's not accurate. Senator, the hearing was cut short, was not cut short from my experience. We had agreed beforehand on the time and, and, uh, and length of it. I am required, not only uh, permitted, but required to fly uh, on uh, an FBI plane wherever I go. That's so, so you were going on vacation? I was, yes. I should have let you. What the fuck? The ranking member, Chuck Grassley, asked you during the hearing. He said, I assume you must have other business. You said... Yes. He then said, if you have a business trip, you've got your own plane, can't it wait a while? He then said, Chuck Grassley, we only just heard half an hour ago that now you have to leave. We were going to have a seven minute round followed by a three minute round. I've got seven people on my side of the aisle that included me who are waiting for this additional round. Is there any reason we can't accommodate them for 21 minutes? And you said, you had a plane to catch. You had somewhere to go. And now we find out it was for vacation? Unfucking real FBI Director Ray, one of the most prolific liars in government. Another great Trump pick. But as bad as that lie was, it's not his biggest lie. When you've convinced yourself that any action you take is somehow justified because it's different when you do it, it leads to the obvious widespread corruption that we're currently seeing in the FBI. For example, remember this? And we're all gonna remember this together after I take 30 seconds to tell you about this free coin offer from Noble Gold. Did you know Noble Gold? Gold's team of precious metals experts have helped thousands of worried investors like you to build and preserve wealth through times like these. Find out why gold, silver, and IRAs are the answer to inflation and financial contagion. Talk to a personal precious metals expert today. Oh, and this month they're gifting a free three ounce silver American virtue coin with every qualified IRA above $20,000. You can't go wrong with Noble Gold. Call the team now at 877-646- 5347 to find out more or visit noblegoldinvestments.com. And as always, there's a link in the description or pinned comment. Just remember, there is always a risk of loss and past performance is not indicative of future results. Did the FBI have confidential human sources embedded within the January 6th protesters? Well, Congressman, as I'm sure you can appreciate, I have to be very careful about what I can say about when. Even we now, because that's what you I, told us two I years ago. May I finish? Uh, about when we do and do not, and where we have and have not used confidential human sources. Oh, come on! Uh, but to the extent that there's a suggestion, for example, that the FBI's confidential human sources or FBI employees in some way instigated or orchestrated January 6th, that's categorically false. Would I lie? Did you have confidential human sources dressed as Trump supporters inside the Capitol on January the 6th? prior to the doors being open? Again, I had to be very careful. It should be I a no. Can you not tell the American people? No, we did not have confidential human sources dressed as Trump supporters positioned inside the Capitol. Gentlemen's time has expired. You should not read anything into my decision uh, not to share information. Director Ray, gentlemen's time. I don't believe you. How could you not watch that and infer that, yes, the FBI did have people dressed as Trump supporters in the Capitol? Gee, I wonder if some of those FBI agents might have incited that right or perhaps let people in. We could get answers to those questions if the FBI would release the tapes, which they won't, unless, of course, they are purposely degraded tapes in order to actively avoid finding people that the FBI wants to hide. Now, here, proactive security, we recommend actually 15 frames per second.
What you're looking at is the actual frame speed of the security video the FBI released to the public of the January 6th pipe bomb suspect. For that matter, if we knew that the FBI had infiltrated these groups, then we would start asking questions like, why wasn't the Capitol secure? None of this would be a stretch because the FBI and its recent directors have been proven liars on multiple occasions. And oddly, this corruption is always always directed at Democrats political opponents. I mean, the list of corruption and lies is staggering. You have the FBI lying to FISA court so they could get warrants to spy on Trump's campaign, none of which were legally justified according to the Inspector General. IG Horowitz even specifically called out the FBI for targeting the Democrats political opponents based on the fact their entire pretext for the Russian collusion investigation was based on actual Russian disinformation that had been purchased by the DNC. Remember the Pulse nightclub shooting? Yeah, Comey was warned about that and did nothing. Oh, and by the way, the shooter's father was an FBI informant. <laughs> Corrupt FBI agents like Peter Strzok, who lied constantly to keep the investigation into Trump going by claiming that the spying operations into Trump's campaign were, quote, fruitful. They weren't. And he also hid the fact that they already knew the Steele dossier was not reliable. He had to lie to carry out the insurance policy after Trump won the election. Before Comey, there was McCabe, and he was fired for lying to the Inspector General four times over multiple abuses. The FBI brazenly lied to the media about Hillary Clinton's emails, saying they had not been accessed by foreign actors. But according to IG reports, the FBI knew for a fact that her emails had been accessed by foreign actors. Remember the attack on GOP senators that almost resulted in the assassination of half the GOP Senate by a Democrat who worked for Bernie Sanders, had a kill list of Republicans on him, and screamed, this is for healthcare as he shot at the Republicans? The attack that FBI Director Ray insisted was suicide by cop for years until finally admitting it was a domestic terrorist attack. Ask yourself, have you ever once heard the media or anyone refer to that as a domestic terrorist attack? Or at all for that matter? since it happened. Then there's that fake Gretchen Whitmer kidnap plot that wouldn't have existed if not for the FBI. Or how about that FBI raid on Trump's Mar-a-Lago house? That has now turned out to be completely worthless and won't amount to anything. Are you starting to see the pattern emerge here? And now, the most recent example of politically targeted corruption from the FBI, January 6th. Like I showed you at the start, they lied about informants and strange figures like Ray Epps, who was on video multiple times inciting rioters and directing them to enter the Capitol, but faces no charges, while elderly cancer patients are in prison for merely setting foot inside the Capitol. Then Chris Ray gave us the biggest, maybe most damning lie that, quote, the FBI did not have any credible intelligence that pointed to thousands of people breaching the Capitol. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yeah, that one's going to come back to bite him here, as I'll show you in just a minute. But before I get to that evidence, we already know that the FBI had deployed, quote, shoot to kill agents and parking attendants seemed to know that there was a large protest scheduled. Then in August, we learned that there were in fact over 20 FBI agents embedded in the groups of protesters. Now, as of yesterday, we're learning that the FBI had eight or maybe more informants within the Proud Boys group. This should immediately raise questions, and if our media wasn't totally corrupted, they'd be asking them. That combined with what the FBI knew prior to January 6th about a large protest begs the question why they didn't have the Capitol blocked off. As I've pointed out before, there was a large riot of Democrat extremists at the inauguration of Donald Trump, and they never made it into the Capitol because it had been blocked off with security, as noted by this clip. Not exactly sure where in the Capitol this is taking place, but it looks like it is well away from the center, which is uh, heavily uh, fenced off for the uh, inauguration ceremony itself. So the Capitol Police and other security totally blocked off the Capitol when it came to the riots that occurred during Trump's inauguration. But then suddenly, when they know there's going to be another large protest in the area, they don't block off the Capitol? Why? Why were the Capitol Police letting people inside? And why is the FBI withholding other videos showing this? The officer holds the door for the protester as he enters the Capitol undeterred. At 2.35 p.m., a large group enters the interior of the Capitol, police standing at the doors. As a steady stream of protesters enter through the Upper West Terrace doors, they can see police officers standing at the interior doors, allowing people to pass.
around 250 protesters entered the Upper West Terrace doors that day, many of which are charged with felony obstruction for entering a building undiscouraged. It very well could be to hide their agents inciting and directing people inside the Capitol so that they could then be used for four years as propaganda against the Republicans. The FBI lied. They lied about having informants in the crowd and in the Proud Boys. They had to, to cover up the fact that they knew there would be a large protest for which they intentionally left the Capitol open so they could then use the results to help Democrats. Folks, I know this all sounds very conspiratorial, but there's really not any other explanations for this. There is absolutely no reason why they shouldn't have had more security and the Capitol totally blocked off just like they had after previous elections. All right, folks, let me know what you all think in the comments. Make sure to hit that like button, share, and subscribe. Thanks a lot.